sometimes when we praise God, sometimes when we come to God, we might have burdens. But when we put down the burdens and then just think about the goodness of God, the more we think about the goodness of God, the more joy we have. So we stick to the theme. Uh, when we talk about joy, then we stick to the theme of joy. Okay? And then... Um, okay, now... Um, let me do some ex more examples so that you have this outline very clear in your mind. Now, if we talk about forgiving others, like Jesus said, you know, if you forgive men of their sins, then also your Father in Heaven will forgive you. And if you don't forgive men their sins, also the Father in Heaven will not forgive you. So we want to forgive. So interpretation of the passage, that the Bible tells us that, you know, God is a forgiving God. That first, when we repent, of our sin and confess our sins, then God will forgive us. And also when we forgive other people, then God is very happy with us and He will continue to forgive us. And then if a person doesn't grow, have the fruit of salvation, doesn't forgive other people, then He will, you know, He doesn't forgive people and then He holds grudges against other people. He dislikes other people. And then it would ruin his relationship with God. And if it becomes very serious, he can even lose salvation because God doesn't forgive him. So that is the worst uh, scenario when a person doesn't forgive at all. Now we're not saved by forgiving other people. We're saved by grace through faith. When we confess our sins and trust in Jesus as our Savior, then we are forgiven. But when a person doesn't have the fruit of forgiveness. That means he doesn't forgive at all. That means there is something wrong with his spiritual life. There is something wrong with his faith. Then he will not uh, have eternal life. So when people don't have any fruit at all, then he, he doesn't forgive people at all. Then he might lose salvation. Example. Okay, now there are examples of people, even in the church, they fight against each other. They dislike each other. When they dislike each other and fight against each other, that means they don't forgive each other. You know, when they think about the bad things someone has, is, has done, then they dislike it and they cannot forgive, then it means they don't forgive if they dislike the person. They don't want to see the person and they fight against that person, that means they are not forgiving the person. So it happens in churches that people fight against each other that the church is split up into groups and then sometimes people would despise other people. Despise. For instance, sometimes they like a leader, they like this leader and then they despise the other leader. So these are ways that people don't forgive each other. And then it happens a lot in marriages that they don't forgive their spouse. And then when they talk, uh, to the friends, they will talk about the, the, the problems of the spouse, the sins of the spouse. Now, it's true that the, the spouse may have problems, but the more they think about the problems, the more they will, they will, not, the more they will not forgive, and then what happens is they will ruin the relationship with the spouse, and also God is not happy with them. So there are examples of people that they don't forgive each other, especially in, in the marriage. So we want to uh, forgive each other, even though they have sinned. We want to forgive them and then we have love toward them. And we want to work on loving them and forgiving them and be kind to them. That will motivate the other person to forgive each other. Okay, and then forgive. Some people forgive each other and then it, it gives good example to other people. And there are, there are uh, in history, in the history of the revival of the Korean church that there was one pastor his son was killed but then he 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 went to the court when this person was tried and then he asked the judge to set this man free and then he said I will take care of him I will receive him into my home and to take care of him and the judge you know, at first couldn't believe that. And later, okay, he said, okay, if you want to take that responsibility, we'll let him go to your home. And then he took this man and 
take care of this man and forgive him. And, and then this man was converted and then became a pastor. And then he brought revival to Korea. So forgiveness can bring revival when people see other people forgive each other. So that's a good example. And then God's nature and grace. God is a forgiving God in His nature. He, he, in His nature, He just wants to forgive. He, is, he has the nature of forgiving people he, in His heart. Now we won't want to talk about the nature. We want to talk about His quality. Even though we have sinned a lot, when God looks at a person, He wants to forgive the person. He wants to give salvation to this person. He wants to bring blessings to this person. God wants to bless the person first. God doesn't wait for us to repent before He, he wants to bless us. You know, if He wait for us to repent to, in order for Him to bless us, you know, He will not bless anyone because no one turned to Him first. It's God who turns people around and then these people a turn around a change and change before they will start to you know uh, repent to God and say Lord please forgive me and then God forgives them so it's God who works in the heart so that will turn the heart toward God so that's his nature and then his grace now Grace is what He does for us. So when you have the grace statements, it always have the word us or we. So God sent the Holy Spirit to work in our heart. He sent workers to preach the gospel to us. He sent Jesus Christ to die for us. And He sent Christians to preach the gospel to us, to bring us to repentance. And then, and then whenever we repent, He forgives us. And He wants forgive us first in the first place actually in Jesus Christ when Jesus died for us already he has the forgiveness for all men already installed already prepared and when a person repent then immediately that forgiveness will come to him God wants to forgive God moves in his heart to forgive uh, move in his heart of, of these people to to accept his forgiveness and then God, uh, He draws people to repent. He works on the heart of people. Some sinners are serious sinners. They steal, they kill, they commit adultery, they do all kinds of terrible things. But God changes their lives so that they start to repent and start to forgive people, start to change their life. And God changes people's life. And then also God's grace is whenever we repent, God is very happy and God will uh, forgive us and God will give us eternal life and God will change our life and God God put the nature of forgiveness in our heart and God will reward us when we forgive other people when we are nice to the to the wicked then he, God is very happy and God will reward us so that is God's nature and grace and why people don't live out this nature that is why people don't forgive because many people, many Christians just look at the faults of other people. They look at the faults of other people and they count the, the faults of other people and they don't want to forgive. And they don't think of, about how much God has blessed them. How much God has poured blessings into their life. So they don't count the blessings. They don't count the blessings of heaven. They don't count the blessings of God saving them, taking them away from hell and give them eternal life and give them joy and peace and motivation and change their life and all these blessings. They don't, f they don't remember these blessings and they just forget about these blessings. So that's why people don't count the blessings of God. They don't believe that when we forgive other people, God is very happy with them. Some Christians even say, I won't forgive this person. I have met two Christians who say clearly they won't forgive their husband because their husband has done something so terrible. And they didn't realize that when they don't forgive them, they won't be forgiven either. Okay, so the reminder and warning, if people don't forgive, then they will not be forgiven by God also. So how to forgive? First, we count the blessings of God. How many sins have God forgiven us? 
our sense of anger, frustration, depression, uh, lust, adultery, of hurting people, yelling at people, stealing, killing, uh, doing a uh, dishonest thing that we are not honest, uh, that we have not trusted in God, that we have committed sin all the time and there is actually nobody can perfectly love God and God forgives us so many sins when we repent of our sins and say, Lord, please forgive me, then God will for sure forgive us. So, so when we think about God's blessings, then we'll say, yes, Lord has forgiven me so much. I want to forgive other people. And then how do we start to forgive? How? Then we think of uh, these people. Now, one thing God has taught me how to forgive is we think of people who hurt us. These people have been hurt by other people. These people have been hurt by other people and that's why they hurt each other. They, they, uh, that they have been hurt from, by the parents, by the friends, by the relatives. And so from childhood, they always are angry. They're always angry. They, so they, it's hard for them to forgive people. It's hard for them to, to be nice to people. So from the childhood, they're always they're hurt by people and they want to hurt other people. So we understand that these people are actually having a miserable life. They are living a terrible life. So we say, Lord, they are living a terrible life. Please help me to forgive them. Please help me to have compassion on them. They, they, they have not received love from God and from people. They have not seen a Christian who loves them. So I want to show love to them. I want to show forgiveness to them, even though they have, they have hurt me. They have hurt me, but I still forgive them and be kind to them, be nice to them. I want to be kind to them. And then when I'm kind to them, then I can change them. So then I start to forgive this person. And I want to pray for the people who have hurt me. I pray for these people who live in sin, who are suffering, and I have compassion on them and I pray for them and I do actions and I talk to them nicely I greet them uh, with a nice voice I care about them I give them gifts I help them spiritually I talk with them I pray for them be kind to them so I do all these things that action of forgiving and then I Remind myself, I'm forgiving them. So God is very happy with me when I forgive other people. God is very happy with me that I forgive other people. And God will reward me. So when I do all these things, then God will say, Wow, I'm happy with you. You are doing well. You are doing well. And then we can remind ourselves, when I forgive other people, God is very happy with me. So I can rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. So here, this is how we follow this method so each of these points have its uh, importance and there are three parts that are most important that are highlight first God's nature and grace we want to talk about this God's nature and grace and reminder and warning we need to have the law also to tell them when they don't obey God there is there are consequences but the main motivation should be from God's grace and nature and then how we have to tell them how exactly how to break the old habits how to change the bad habits and then build in the new habits how to change we have to give them practical steps to forgive people we need to understand these people have been hurt by other people and then these people are living a miserable life they have always suffered in their life when they don't forgive people when they hurt other people so they are suffering and I have compassion on them and I want to bless them. I want to be nice to them. I want to be kind to them. And then I tell myself, when I'm kind to them, God is very happy with me. When I forgive them, God is very happy with me. When I'm nice to them, God is very happy with me. So I tell them exactly how to forgive and then how to encourage ourselves. Whenever I do anything right, 
I encourage myself and say, God is happy with me, so I have reasons to be joyful, and I have reasons to continue to obey God in certain in that way. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now I'm going to use example of. Um, now I just use this uh, passage. If we, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Okay, we just have used that. Okay, and then now the outline, the examples. Many people cannot forgive, and the nature. God is a forgiving God, and. God has the ability to give us forgiveness. God can change our life so that we can learn to forgive people. And grace, so in grace is always uh, has the us or something related to us. God forgives our great greatest sins. God is pleased with those who forgive. So when we we forgive others, God is pleased with us, and He will forgive those who forgive other people. So He'll forgive us, and He'll reward us. And He gives us the strength. Also, the grace is He gives us the strength to forgive. He gives us when we talk about joy, He gives us ability to be joyful. When we talk about love, He gives us ability to love. He changes our hearts so that we can love and be joyful. And why is it hard to forgive? And warning: when we don't forgive others, we are not living out God's nature, and we could face God's judgment. And how we can forgive people, and so list out how people, how we can forgive other people. Okay, and then um, Matthew six nineteen. Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys. And where thieves do not break in and steal. Okay, so these verses talk about do not lay up for yourself treasure on earth. That do not just think of, you know, keeping all the money for ourselves. Where moth or rust destroy. Uh, that now, of course, in those days, rust and moth and rust can destroy the. Uh, the the money they have, but today, um, it doesn't happen that way. But it can happen in many different ways. That our health can cause us a lot of money, health problems, and or when we you know don't are not faithful to use the money, then uh, God can take away the money from us. Then God can take away the job from from us. And but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. So that means give. Offering to God, and use money to build up the kingdom of God. Use money to build up Christians to serve God. Where neither moth nor rust destroys. So when the money in heaven, nothing can destroy the money. The money will stay there forever. When we give willingly, when we give with a willing heart, with a joyful heart, then the money will stay in heaven forever. And <coughs> and where thieves do not break in and steal, and there in heaven. The thieves do not break in and steal. So, these verses talk about that that、uh, lay up a treasure in heaven. If not, the treasure will go away, and and then we can lose the money. So we use this outline now, and、uh, to talk about this interpretation of passage that you know if we just lay up treasure treasure in on earth. Then the, we can lose the money. One day the money is useless, and then even though we keep a lot of money, still we don't、uh, cannot keep the money. The money will not stay with us, and we can lose the money because of health problem or other problems. Examples that many people are not faithful in giving. Many Christians are not faithful to tithe. They say they don't have money, and they, so they don't tithe and they don't give offering and they give. A very very small amount of money, and what happens is when they don't offer much, then God doesn't pour blessings into their life. Now, when we give offering, we don't have the heart of saying, "Okay, God, I give you so much money, please give me back five times, ten times." We don't say that. We just say, "God, I give you willingly." It's 
you know, the gift of God that I have received these blessings. Lord, I, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you that you give me all these gifts. It's wonderful. So we thank God for the blessings. We thank God for the grace of God. So, um, so there are some people who don't live out this nature and don't, uh, don't give willingly. And there are some people who give willingly. There are some people who give all the money, all the life, all the uh, abilities, everything they give to God. Like for instance, Heidi Baker who, went, uh, who goes to Africa and she, he, she didn't take any money. She didn't have money when she went to Africa. And God provides for her and then she helps many orphans. And he, she brought revival to these orphans and they became pastors. And she built many churches in Africa. So God uses her greatly. Okay, and then God's nature and grace. God is a giving God. God gives us all kinds of blessings. All the blessings we have comes from God. And God's grace, He gives us blessings so that we can give. And He gives us, changes our hearts so that we are willing to give. And then when we give, He will reward us. He will remember how much we give and how whether we are joyful when we give and then he will remember that and then he will reward us and then why people don't give because they think when they give they will lose the money they don't believe that God will really bless them so they are uh, selfish and then what happens is they they become poorer and poorer now as soon as I became a Christian and I learned that I should tithe I, I start to tithe and I start to take God seriously. There was one time I worked in the summer, a summer job. And there were two weeks, one or two weeks I forgot. I did not work. And they still give me a paycheck. And I told the man, I said I did not work in that period of time. And I give the check back. And I said to him, because I'm a Christian. So therefore I don't take the money. So I told him that, that God is good. God is uh, real. Therefore, I, I obey God. So I, as soon as I became a Christian, I learned that I should tithe and I start to tithe. And then my life is blessed by God. And God gave me, provide for me so that I can study overseas. And then I have learned a lot of things. God gave me the opportunities to learn different things. And God gave me the infilling of the Holy Spirit and many, and many opportunities. And I thank God for all this. So, so God's grace, and uh, for me, I thank God for that. And then why people don't live out? Because they don't count the blessings. And a reminder and warning, when the people don't give willingly, then what happens is they will, they will actually become poor. They, they, they will actually will not be blessed by God. And how? That we learn to give. When we count the blessings of God, how God has blessed us with His joy, with His peace, with His goodness, with His kindness, then we thank God, God, you have given me so many things, therefore I want, to, uh, I want to serve you. I want to glorify you. I want to give money to you. And I want to give because I'm joyful, because I thank you, because I appreciate you. So I choose to give more. So we choose to give. So, uh, and we work on our, our selfishness. If we are not willing to give, then we say, Lord, please forgive me. I know that I have this heart. I worry about my money. So please help me that I will learn to give willingly. And then we choose to give. And we say, Lord, give me faith and help me that I, I want to be uh, willing to give uh, to give offering and help people who are in need. And then uh, when we see how God is blessing us and God is giving us joy and provision, and then we thank God and say, Lord, I want to give more to you. I want to be faithful to you. So I, I pray that you understand this outline. This will help you uh, in all messages. You, so you try to think of different messages. Okay, now let me say that. Some people do assignments and they always just, the theme is always just general grace. It's just, okay, live out the grace of God, respond to God's grace, God's grace is great. It's, it doesn't list out. We have to list out the theme has to be specific. For instance, the theme is about giving. The theme is about doing evangelism to people, to love people, or to 
be joyful, the theme of uh, growth, <coughs> growing in Christ, have courage in Christ, or do evangelism, or uh, grow uh, to enter the plan of God, to find a specific area we want to follow God. Don't just have a theme of oh, uh, grow in the grace of God, count God's blessing, and this is general. Have a specific theme, a narrow theme about one area of our Christian life. The, it could be about prayer life, it could be about trusting in God, it could be about thanking God, it could be about taking care of our problems. So, so God bless you and God be with you.